Today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 383, equitable accumulators, cash management accounts, and social security. With today's market volatility, how can you squeeze a few more dollars of income out of your retirement savings? Any reason not to use a robo-advisor for decumulation, in other words, spending down those savings? Plus, a pension retirement spitball follow-up, and is it possible to avoid the tax liability on a lump sum withdrawal from a 401k? Finally, is Joe's marriage the canary in the Coors Light party ball for YMYW? I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson CFP and Big Al Clopine CPA. Go to yourmoneywealth.com, click on Ask Joe and Al on the air, ask any financial question, any question whatsoever. Anything you want to talk about, that's what we're here for. Even non-finance related. I don't care. Just something to... Something to talk about. Yeah, something interesting <laughs> okay. that we can chat about. We can probably get a lot more questions that way. Yeah. You know what? Volatile markets, Alan. Yes. It's like crickets. Yeah. You know, bull markets, it's like we get 400 emails a day. But right. I think people are freaking out a little bit, kind of hiding under the covers. <laughs> Seem to be. Well, right? now is the right time to start asking questions, right? Well, it is. And and so the tendency, of course, in a market like we're at right now is to is to either sell or just try to stay put and ride it out. And and the truth is, you know, staying put's better than selling. But actually now, if you've got extra capital, now's a great time to buy. The market's down roughly 20% since right. the beginning of the year. And it's the exact opposite of what everyone wants to do. Everyone wants is worried the market's going to go down more. And by the way, it may go down more. But if you think about if the, the stock market is priced 20% cheaper today than it was at the beginning of the year, it's a good buy. Even if it does go down further, because we know it's going to go back up later at some point. Yep. How, how many times have you looked at your account, Big Al? I don't pay much attention you know, to it. I have not looked at mine at all. Yeah, because I, I mean, it's it's all it's it's managed properly, and I think that's way healthier. Um, all right, what do we got here? We got Steve. You know, writes in from Ramona. He goes, "I'm retired, almost seventy years old. I have an IRA of one point four million in an equitable accumulator that has a payout for me if I achieve it." Of, Active, activate. Oh, activate. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. If I activate. The equitable accumulator. Yes. It's $21,000 a year. Yeah. I was thinking of using my accumulator for added income to my Social Security first before taking from my IRA at this point. Would that be a better move with the market as it is right now? So that sounds like an annuity. Yeah. the uh, well, I'm sure it's equitable as a life insurance company. It is. And accumulator sounds with a payout, sounds like an annuity. <laughs> sounds like an annuity to me. Yeah. And so we need a lot more information, Steve, because is it is it in a retirement account, not in a retirement account? So you purchase this annuity and it's going to give you $21,000 a year. Uh, but what is really your internal rate of return? Did you buy the annuity for income? Uh, did you buy for accumulation, as it says here, the accumulator? Yes, it seems like it would be implied. So I wouldn't necessarily wor worry all that much about the market and, and kind of switch your, your, yeah. your plan. Well, I get what he's thinking. I heard the asset that the stock market's down. So let me so, put on the accumulator, yeah, get $21,000. Sell, sell put, pull it from the stock market. I, yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. If that's what you purchased the annuity for. So the information, folks, that we need to kind of give you a little bit better spitball here. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, that was fairly weak. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I got this accumulator. Should I turn it on? Um, okay. Here's the other 10 questions we need to ask. <laughs> so we would like to know basically what your goals are in regards to spending. So that means, Steve, are you spending $50,000 a year or is it $150,000 a year? We would also like to know what is your other fixed income sources? Yeah. So you have Social Security. What is that covering? Is that $20,000 or is it $40,000? Do you have a pension? Do you have a pension? What other assets do you have? And then when you start putting the puzzle together, then we can kind of spitball and say, all right, well, here, this makes sense to turn on your accumulator accelerator, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. <laughs> Accumulated. <laughs> and, and, and that could bridge the gap, you know, and so you can continue to let your retirement accounts, you know, be fully invested where you're not pulling any dollars from it. And then that would be a safe bridge to X, Y, Z. So then we could give you maybe a little bit better spitball. Here yeah. is, yeah. You, 
We also need to know what your IRA balance is because that's going to factor into to this. Well, he did give us that. He's got an IRA 1.4. Oh, okay. Of I'm course, he's got to brag that. about that. Yeah. Oh, that was, I was right up front. <laughs> yeah. I glanced over that. Before I <laughs> say anything else, I just want you to know I have a <laughs> retired account of 1.4 million. You going to pat me on the back? <laughs> yeah. Should I turn on the accumulator? <laughs> <laughs> you're right, I missed that. right. Um, okay congratulations on the 1.4 yep um, but we need a little bit more information sure i don't know anything else on that one well just, just one other probably unrelated comment for steve but just the general comment which is if you have an ira and your ira is going to be your main source of income in retirement do not have all of it in equities so if the market goes down you can pull from safe money like bonds for example and when the market goes up, then pull from the stocks. So you, you can pull from either side, depending upon which way the market's going. If you go 100% equities, you're forced to pull money out while the market's down, which is then very hard to recover. When the market's down and you're taking money from it, it's, it's very hard to recover. Another thing, let me talk about what potentially this equitable accumulator is. Okay. It, it sounds like the, it, it's like you're, you're, he's going to get a guaranteed income of twenty one thousand dollars a year for the rest of his life. Yeah. However, what was the, the the balance that he put into it? Yeah. Right. So you you needed to put a lump sum into this annuity, and the annuity continues to grow. And then once you ex put on the the accumulator, or whatever. Or once you turn on the income, he's saying it's going to be twenty one thousand dollars a year. Sure. So was that a two hundred thousand dollar investment? Was it a million dollar investment? So th those are other things that you have to look at because sure. usually what happens, you don't receive a rate of return on those types of annuities until you get all of your principal back. So for instance, let's say you put $200,000 into the product and they say, we're going to promise you $10,000 a year guaranteed for life or, or use the 20,000 for that matter. You put in 200, they're going to give you $20,000 guaranteed, but that $20,000 comes out, you start with 200. So you have 10 years. Right until you make a dime on it, you just get your money back. You got your money back and, over that ten year and, time period, and usually you leave it in for a while before you start taking the money out. Right? right. So, so you didn't get any money then. Right. So let's say you you put the money in, and then it grows for ten years. Then you turn on the accumulator. So it basically takes twenty years to get your money back. Correct. So you don't have a rate of return until the twenty first year. Exactly. So you have to look at this. You got to do the math a little bit, um, in in and look at the internal rate of return because it's an insurance product. You're insuring against longevity risk. And if that's what your goal is, and you don't mind a very low rate of return, then that's probably the right product and turn it on. We got a voicemail. I have a CMA account. Are RMDs required to be taken from a CMA account? Thank you. Short and sweet. All right. I have no idea. Cash managed account. Yeah. Well, Usually those are not qualified. How do we know it's a cash managed account? Well, I don't know what else it would be. It could be, <laughs> I don't know. It could be like another acronym for another company's okay. SMA. Well, okay. So I'm going to answer it as a cash managed account. If it's inside of a retirement account, yes, you need to take a required distribution. If it's not in a retirement account, the answer is no. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, I think of CMAs as cash managed account. It's it's typically something certain, uh, you know, like big brokerage firms have accounts. It's your cash account that you pay bills out of, but they also it, get, it also gets swept out to investment accounts. So you get a little bit higher interest rate. And th these are, I, I, I've never seen one that was, was a, a, a retirement account, but if it means something else, then your answer is actually foolproof. Right. I mean, if, if the CMA, <laughs> if you have a CMA account, and we're assuming it's cash management account. I mean, you know, some people, they write, they write in, they go, I have the accumulator. <laughs> it's like, what the hell's an accumulator? <laughs> right. The, the accumulator is something that the insurance company created to call their annuity. Right. Right. Or I got the... The Megatron. What the hell's a Megatron? Right? People are starting <laughs> making stuff up on, on strategy. Right. Right. And so then they trademark it. And it's like, well, no, that's that, that means nothing. Right. <laughs> it's marketing. Here's what it actually is. So if it's cash managed account and if you have it in a retirement account, um, yes, you have to take an RMD. Okay. Should I start taking my social security benefit on 1 1 2023, age 68? In the amount of thirty six thousand one sixty eight annually instead of age seventy at forty thousand dollars, and save some extra cash. 
My break-even point would be 16.84 years. I've been living on cash for the past four years and eight months. I've been doing Roth conversions since 2018, pay no federal or state taxes uh, with an exemption of $38 to the state in 2021. Oh, look at the big brain on Kurt. <laughs> I don't know. So does he take it at 68 versus 70? So he's looking at if I take it at 36,168, you know, versus 40,464 annually, and I save some of my cash of 105,649, my break even point would be 16 years. So he's adding up the dollar figures of what he's receiving for age 68, and then he's adding up the dollars he would read receive at age 70 and when does that break even yeah so when he, does it cross over he's computing 84 i think what's being missed is when he receives that amount at age 70 it'd be a higher amount because of generally increases in social security now of course you'll get it on what you take right now too but you're going to have a higher increase so there'll be more disparity so i think it's a little bit less of a break even period than you think but it's kind of close enough i yeah. mean whatever you want to do is fine by us yeah i mean splitting hairs here yeah I mean, is, is <clears throat> I don't know, are you married? Because that's another option. So if you're married, you probably, you, you could, you potentially might want to wait because if you have the higher benefit, because if Kurt dies, then the surviving spouse is going to get the higher of the two. And if she has a the same benefit, well, then take it now. If she doesn't have a benefit, she's taking the spousal benefit. Well, then you might want to take it now too, because yeah. then she can't claim the spousal benefit unless you claim. And if you have a kid under 17. Yeah. If you're like our go, other. Go for, it. go for it. So there's all sorts of different kind of scenarios here, but. Um, it's, it's kind of close enough. Yeah. Right? I don't, we don't look at it as a break even. You're looking at it as an investment. We look at it as insurance. Right. So if, if I have enough cash to get a guaranteed higher payment um, by the federal government for the rest of my life, I might want to wait a couple of years. That's tax favored? Yeah, that's tax favored. Tax favored. The, the most you ever pay tax on is is 85% of the income from Social Security. 15% is tax-free. And, and you generally don't pay any state taxes. And Kurt's in, in California, there's no state taxes. So wouldn't you rather have a higher benefit that's tax-free, right? So all things to think about, but I would honestly say the numbers are close enough. It, whatever you want to do is fine by me. Yep, I agree. So, what are some other ways to generate income, especially during this market roller coaster? Read about three income alternatives that can help you find cash flow in a low yield world on the Pure Financial blog. And download the free guide to retirement income strategies. You'll find both in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your podcast app to access the free financial resources, read the transcript of this episode, then don't forget to hit the share button. Spread both the YMYW podcast and all the free financial resources among your friends, family, and colleagues. And we thank you for that. Uh, we got Jim from Santa Cruz calling. Hello, YMYW. It's been about six weeks since my last confession. <laughs> Oops. Six weeks since Wait, my last email. The, the confession booth is open for business. <laughs> Fire away. Oh, uh, boy. As my good friends Jack and Diane are getting close to retirement, they're realizing that how one accumulates assets is really different from how one spends those assets. They heard about a bunch of different methods, bucket strategies, and things like that. But they're looking for something simple. Diane is now wondering about Robo advisors. She's noticed that Vanguard has Vanguard Digital Advisors, Fidelity offers Fidelity Go, and Schwab offers Schwab Intelligent Advisors. Each offers more or less automatic rebalancing diversification within the account. Uh, these accounts seem to be designed for wealth accumulation, but Diane wonders how they would stack up for decumulation rather than constantly moving money from one bucket to another. They can simply make their withdrawal and let Schwab or Fidelity Vanguard manage and, and rebalance. What, if any, are your thoughts on using robo-advisors to spend down retirement savings? Thanks, as always, for the great show. Jim from Santa Cruz. Um, I don't know. I'll take a stab out. Robo-advisors are just fine, right? There's a purpose for all types of advisors, and a robo-advisor is... Um, a robot. Yeah, it's an, it's an automated advisor. Right. And so you set it, forget it. You're going to rebalance it depending on 
what type of robo you pick. You know, they could go on bands, they could rebalance monthly, they could, you know. Sure. Um, and then you're going to ask for a couple of bucks out of the account. That's fine. They're going to send you the distributions via, you know, ACH into your checking account. Yeah. And then they'll rebalance and rebalance and you're, you're off good. and running. Yeah. So, so the, the complaint people have on robo advisors is it's a robot. <laughs> I can't talk to anybody. So it's like, I've got a question besides a distribution. Like, can I afford this or, or can I retire now? Or if I, if I'm short, what, how much do I need to cut my spending? So these are all things that you get from an advisor or life changes. Gosh, my, my parents passed away. I got a little bit of money. What should I do with it? That's the complaint on robo advisors. But if you don't need any of that, then go for it. It's yeah. a, it's a lot cheaper. It's a cheaper. Yeah. It's a cheaper alternative. Yeah, another thing to look at too, is that, um, let's say you, Diane or Jack wants a certain dollar figure out. How are they going to get the distribution? Are they going to take it pro rata from the entire account? You know, so what I mean by that, maybe they have, you know, 20% large cap, 20% small cap, 20% international, 20% short-term bonds and yeah. you know, the, whatever. Right. So are they going to take, uh, an aggregate of all the different accounts as they're creating that income on a monthly, quarterly, annual basis. Yeah, I'm guessing not. I'm guessing they'll just pick one source and then periodically rebalance, but I don't know that for sure. Right, right. so th th those are the things that you want to make sure that you understand because you probably don't want it pro rata because you probably want to sell the asset that's up, not necessarily down. Right. Right. Or you want to have a strategy in place that when we have a bear market like we're experiencing now, you're not selling stocks that are down 20%. Or if you have individual stocks that are down 40, 50%. Right. So the strategy with a real human advisor is that you're going to be able to probably get a little bit more sophistication in the overall strategy, especially on decumulation. You're going to be looking at, all right, well, how much money should be pulled from the retirement account versus a brokerage account versus the Roth account to really mitigate or manage your taxes long-term? Yeah. And that's what you would get from a good advisor, right? So yeah, you're missing a bunch of stuff. But if, if, you, if your situation is not that complicated and you're, and you're in a low enough tax bracket, yeah, go for it. Yep. Okay, cool. Nice to talk to you again, Jim. Um, all right, let's switch gears. Let's go to Sean from Los Angeles. He goes, hello, I'm following up on initial question, which you responded to in podcast 379. Oh, you even puts the time down. <laughs> At 31, 31, 26. 31 minutes, 26 seconds. So if you want to go back and listen to 379, get, get a frame of reference. Leave partially vested pension to grow or withdraw and convert to Roth. Sean, Los Angeles. First, I want to thank you for the podcast and featuring my question. I keep your calculations ready uh, for use in my Google Sheet Excel app. 72 rule, RMD rule, 25 multiplier rules. All right, there you go. Okay. I have a follow-up on my conundrum. Conundrum. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I like Joe's version better, a conundrum. I like yours better. Sounds very exciting. It, it, it is very exciting. He's got troubles. You, you just got to gotta force it out there. I think a conundrum, that's trouble too. <laughs> I'm hooked on phonics, Al. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I was told the wrong information by the first person I spoke with at the UCRP. There is no mandatory distribution at age 60. Rather, they are trying to allude to RMDs, which occur much later. I have a stable job, make $200,000 a year, still hope to retire in 15 to 20 years. I have $500,000 in the workplace, 401k, 168 in the Roth, and 70k in savings. I've decided it's a no-brainer to keep it in the UCRP plan, even as separate employees, separated employee. Um, I can confirm it's accrued 6% monthly, not yearly. P.S. I'm not sure if that is confidential or can be shared to the public. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> I mean, dude, it's, you put that in the front of the email. It's not, out there. Like in, in the middle of it. <laughs> and by the way, this is strictly confidential and don't talk about it on the radio. Oh. <laughs> Sean, we don't read this crap before the show. It's like Andy hands it to me and I start reading. I didn't mean to call your situation crap. I apologize. <laughs> uh, P.S. I'm not sure if that's okay. Or you read that. Okay, thank you. Um, I got nervous. <laughs> now, we're in a conundrum. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's got a conundrum, but we got a conundrum. <laughs> uh, on the helpline, uh, they openly also uh, quote this number, which I confirmed on my statements. I have decided to keep it for both the interest accrual 
and the 0 0.001 chance I may return to UC to keep the service credits intact. I really appreciate how you all approach people's dilemmas. It's not an all-in-one approach, but rather a sensible approach based on individual cases. Unlike the old popular Ramsey, which I feel <laughs> one size spouses in, imposes espouses espouses. Yes. What the hell does espouses? You don't even have to say that word. I know. He, Ramsey he feels he that promotes, one size all. but what's espouses to to promote? It's like yeah, promote. It's another way to say promotes. When's the last time you said espouses? I I say a, a esposo in Spanish. <laughs> Male spouse, I say esposa. That's that's my that's my wife. That's that's what, yeah. No, I've never said esposa. <laughs> the official that. definition is to adopt or support, is to espouse. That so that's more supportive than promote. Yeah. So that's why it's there. Got it. <laughs> because your spouse is supposed to support you. Just, all right. Well, we'll we'll find out shortly. <laughs> <laughs> is there a question? No, I guess not. We just it's spent just all a that comment. time. Come. Hey, we tell them that they should write in and give us their questions or comments or suggestions or requests or tell us stories. So he was following okay. up because he knew that you would be fascinated to know what the real story was in his situation. Yeah. Well, do you think do you, do you think there's something that you earn 6% a month? No. Me neither. It's 6%. It's, it's something's missing in translation. It, yeah, it's, it's 6%, but it's probably accrued monthly. Right. Well, he seems to think it's six percent. It's a half a percent a month. It, right. But I think he thinks it's six percent per month. That, I mean, that's a pretty good rate of return. <laughs> I'd say that doesn't. That's a Ponzi scheme. Well, yeah, yeah. That's more, <laughs> so, Sean, do this. Just take a look at your statement, right, and then look at the, the, the interest that accrued for the entire year, and then divide it into the overall balance. And but I agree with you. It would be half a percent a month. But I think he's trying to correct this. It's six percent a month, and it can't be. I agree. Let, look again. Yeah, you, um, well, no wonder why UC is, you know, four hundred thousand dollars a quarter. Yeah, that's why the, the price has gone up. Yeah, <laughs> Those pension plans are really expensive. For non even employees, we're paying them six percent a month. <laughs> uh, that would be something, wouldn't it? It would be great. Um, I would jump all over that. But six percent is still awesome. It, it's a great rate. Great rate annually. Yeah. Yep. So. The retirement spitball has become one of the most popular parts of YMYW. There's no question about it. But you've heard Joe and Big Al say many times, they're just two guys chatting about whatever info you give them. There's a lot more to your financial well-being. Before you make any serious decisions that will affect your retirement income and the rest of your life, schedule a one-on-one -on -one personalized, comprehensive assessment of your entire financial picture with one of the experienced financial professionals on Joe and Big Al's team at Pure Financial Advisors. They'll analyze where you are now, what your needs and goals are for the future, and your tolerance for risk to help you build a retirement plan that suits you and your family. Pure Financial is a fee-only fiduciary. They don't sell any investment products or earn any commissions, and they're required by law to act in the client's best interest. Not all financial planners are. There's no cost and no obligation, and they can meet with you via Zoom from anywhere you happen to be, or meet at one of Pure Financial's six offices in Southern California, Seattle, or Chicago. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app, then click Free Financial Assessment to schedule yours. 81-year-old widow living in an assisted living facility has a 401k, uh, which drew a lump sum to pay for monthly assisted living, now has a huge tax liability. Any way to circumvent this tax? Okay. Well, would an assisted living qualify as a medical expense? Partial. So, so the three levels are independent living, assisted living, and skilled nursing. So generally, skilled nursing is 100% medical deduction. And independent living is usually pretty minor. So assisted living is somewhere in between, but it may only be, I don't know, 25, 30%. So, and hopefully you didn't pull out a big lump sum to pay the fees for the next several Five years, because yeah. now you're really stuck. You would just do, you take out enough for that year, right? And you're going to get some tax deduction, but if that's your only money to pay for this facility, then you have to pay that tax. Now, fortunately, if people, if that's their only money and they don't have a lot of other income, they're usually in a lower bracket. 
So you get some deduction from medical expenses and maybe you're in a lower bracket, especially after the standard deduction. But yeah, it's if in fact a lump sum was pulled out to do the next five years, then that would have been a mistake because now you're in a high bracket. What's Juan doing now? What's what's his comment here? Juan loves a throwback hosted by Andy, built to last. That's versus- his nickname for me, which I think is really cool. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> so he he likes the older shows as opposed to new new pod. I don't know. So Juan he writes in. He's like, hey, and he throws himself in third person, yep. <laughs> which is like one of my biggest pet peeves. <laughs> That's probably specifically Juan, for your benefit. Juan loves a throwback hosted by Andy built to last versus a new pod. But is there a canary in the coal mine? Coors Light party ball? A canary in the Coors Light party ball. Remember those party balls? <laughs> yeah. Remember those things? It was like just pure foam. Okay. You never had a party ball, Al. I- yeah. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you didn't know what those. I was thinking they were hmm. like it was like a mini keg. So these well, Coors Light party balls, you would buy them, and they were like a it, it was a ball. All right, I, I know what that is. Then. And then they had a pump it's, on it. It's, it's like yeah, no, I've, I've seen those. It, and is that kind of like a current growler? It, a lot bigger, bigger, but it was it's like all foam. There yeah, you go. there's a party ball for you, Big Al. Got it. Yep, I've used those. I didn't know that's what it's called. Got it. Okay. It's even a disco ball version. But I figured (laughs) since it was Coors Light Party Ball, it was probably something like that. But but if you're going to ask me to explain it, I would have to Google it. Ignorance. Got it. (laughs) Jose broke hearts everywhere by forfeiting the crown of San Diego's most eligible bachelor recently. Uh, Yeah, that's you. Yeah, I did. But now he's lucky to squeeze in a quick nine holes versus 18. An E9 of yesteryear. No, emergency nine. The Peloton is likely now trapped with fur coats <laughs> in designer ladies' clothing. No bueno. Is that true? No. No, you still use it. I'm grinding on that yeah, thing, okay. man. Um, keep your chin up, Jose. It's only get easier, cheaper once you start having kids. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on... Uh, I just did 300 rides, Big Al, in the old Peloton. Good for you. Yep. Grinder. You are a grinder. Yeah. Speaking, yeah, I got a little one. It's too late, Jose. We had COVID baby, so. <laughs> COVID baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what happens when you get caught up and, you know, you can't go anywhere and you're in the house and. You're going to have a baby. Yeah. Then next thing you know, like what? a lot of people had babies over the. The summer last yeah, summer. Yeah, it's funny how that ha- seems to happen. She's like, what? Wow, busy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for us. Uh, keep your questions coming. I know the markets are a little volatile. You're probably a little nervous. Um, it's okay. Things will always kind of work out in the end. I know this time you probably feel it's different, but it's not. Um, it's just different scenarios that create different anxieties that cause the markets to react in certain ways. So if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have thoughts, anything, you just want to vent, just write into us and we'll read them on the air and hopefully that can calm some nerves. Yourmoneywealth.com. Click on that Ask Joe and Al and we're going to answer them right here. Uh, We'll see you next time. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. Click the Get an Assessment button in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257 and schedule that free financial assessment at a time and date convenient for you, no matter where you are in the country. Chances are one of those experienced financial professionals at Pure will be able to identify strategies to help you create a more successful retirement. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personal investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision.